owner wants to uh, ask me questions, yes. right? So ask away. No, I'm going to turn <laughs> she wants, it. She wants to turn the tables. That's okay, right. all right. Okay, so you can point, it's still pointed at me, so go ahead. You just hold it. There you go, all right, see, all right, now. See, easy. You've yes. been a part of this process, this conversation for over a decade, if not longer. Actually, just over a generation. Uh, I go back seven. Remember, 2000. Specifically, it was October 19th of 2000 that I appeared before this body to ask for the body to um, give us a contractual right to sign the contract we already given them, so that the National Football League and the Oakland Alameda County Sports Commission can use this facility and the stadium for the Super Bowl. They took an action of no action. I didn't mention that. Uh, everybody, Ignacio was there. He showed up here late. Um, Larry, Reed, uh, Nate Miley was council member at the time. Scott Hager, he was out in the account of board supervisors even then. Scott McKibben was publisher of the Oakland Tribune and online sports commission and actually saved our Super Bowl effort because then Oakland Mayor Jerry Brown walked into our meeting with Commissioner Tagliabue, which occurred May 10th of the same year, 2000. Ten minutes late, and he only stayed for 40 minutes. He only stayed for about 30 minutes and then left. Commissioner Tagliabue had budgeted two hours of his time for our meeting in my presentation. When Jerry walked in, late, and I'm at the head of the table, he walks in on this side, sits down, Commissioner Tagler goes on that side, Roger Goodell sitting right over there, Derek Hagens, who is the Indian NFL leader, was sitting over here, okay? Jennifer Gonzalez is sitting over there, McKibben's over here. I haven't lined up like it happened yesterday. Jerry had the nerve to sit down and ask in front of me, the commissioner, so you think this budget, you think this plan he's got to work? He's the mayor of Oakland, and yet he made, tried to make me look bad. To which Commissioner Paul Tagli Bruce said, I think he's got a great plan. Okay. So the point being, having gone through all of what you've I gone through. I go back to 1993 with this stuff. Having gone through all you've gone through since 1993, what does it feel like today? Has the needle moved far enough for you to feel that it will happen? Yes and no. I mean, yes in that this is a different situation. It's a truly privately financed effort. But knowing that some of the same people that were responsible for our not moving forward is still involved. And that, that's why when I was in Atlanta, and I'm, I'm saying this on camera, <clears throat> but they know how I feel. When I was in Atlanta about three weeks ago, I think it was, I turned on the radio, 92.9 the game, and the guy said, I was headed to the gym, the guy says, well, you know, the A's are going to relocate out of Oakland. That's that's pretty much known. They were actually the first candidate. And I'm thinking, and I did that because my thought was, you know, the national media is under the impression that we don't want to retain sports, and that sports doesn't want to be here. And that's bad. That's Take sports out of the, the equation. That's economic development. Basically, everybody's thinking we don't want to do economic development. And when I was in Boston for the uh, meeting where Jed York and Dan Lurie won the right to host the Super Bowl, that was 2012. And I met Mark Davis then. Um, Jerry, in fact, Jerry Bell of USA Today introduced us. Mm. Uh, I saw the Minnesota delegation because they had won the right to host Super Bowl. That would be this year for this season. And they were all lined up. And I imagine if they were open on the account and they weren't, I started crying. Because we don't want to be great. Okay? And it really bothers me. And that's why I keep thinking, gee, maybe I should move to Atlanta because, you know, my mom is there in Fayetteville. She's in her 80s, right? But also, the new stadium opens in a month. Atlanta wants to be great. It's a similar business and commerce in a way that, you know, I would like this place to be. But I'll be 55 August 4th, and I'm kind of tired of waiting for this area to 
to Oakland to just say, Ugh. and then it's like we have a problem where to be blunt, we should be really happy if we get like white development, you know. And we've had this problem for a long time, and it's like, and if you think about it from another perspective, Jerry had the 10K project to bring in, you know, people elegant density, but then he used redevelopment to push that forward, which had a component called the Affordable Housing Fund, 20% set aside. Then he got rid of it. Think about this. Pay attention, folks. Think about this. Hold this a little bit. Steadier like that. Okay. I want you to think about this, okay? Because he put, uh, Sandra's like, her eyes are like right over here, so I'm looking like right over here. He put, we had a $124 million affordable housing fund last year that, afford, that redevelopment existed in Oakland, the old redevelopment system. Now the council brags about having $53 million for affordable housing. When I read that in a newsletter I got from Annie Campbell Washington, I went ballistic. I thought, are you kidding me? You're bragging about that? We have had double that before? It's ridiculous. Think about this, folks. Jerry took that away, all right? And with it, no affordable housing at all. So what's going on now? People who were once in Oakland are being pushed out. In the same way that a lot of people couldn't afford the elegant density that was brought in Oakland. So is this kind of like you know a modern way of poor and evil removal? Well, we know you can't afford it. We know you're going to move, so we're not going to like push you out. We're going to make it harder for you to stay because of your economic situation. I want you to think about that. And this comes from progressives. There are no Republicans involved in this, folks. So you can't blame Republicans. These are progressives, which is why I don't call myself a progressive. Okay? So in closing, <laughs> how, would you, how would you rate your optimism, one being the lowest, ten being the highest? Uh, oh, a seven. That's good, then. Yeah, you know, a seven. Because, again, these guys, this is a privately financed thing. And what what's unfortunate is that elected officials in Oakland have the disease of being that, of believing that their tax dollars are always wanted by somebody. But what an elected official is supposed to do, what a mayor is supposed to do, is call, like Libby called Mark Benioff, you know, call, do the same thing. In Chicago, we have an investment board of private individuals who have money to invest. I've called for that in for years. We still don't have it, you know? We don't have anything like that. And, and yet we have people all over this who we brag about, you know, being investors in VCs. Fine, invite them. They don't want to be involved in it. And nothing gets being off of the Oakland Promise, but it's great to give you know money for kids, but their parents need help too, okay? And I'm sorry, but I can go on and on and on about that one. Well, and that Mark will Benioff, be... And Mark Benioff owes us a basketball team because it was he who called Joe Lacob and told him about that land that's now going to be Chase Arena. And yet, look at this arena we sit... Look, Chris, I want you to... Come with me. I want you to see this. And so people have talked all along. This is where the Warriors came in. I don't care what anybody says. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to It wasn't San Francisco. All right. It's right here in Oakland. This is Oracle Arena. This beautiful facility that right now sits unused, which a sports commission should have been created. I'm the only person in Oakland history to create a sports commission from scratch. Fill this with activity. Cheerleader competitions, gymnastics, running. Maybe we can create our own sports events, right? Right here. And yet, the mayor at one point said she wanted to tear this down. That's crazy. The people that work here. You know, someone says, well, it's like a, it doesn't pay well. But think about it, it does from another standpoint. It allows them to see top-notch sports events while they're getting paid, right? Think about it. They can say, yeah, I was at the finals, I worked it. Maybe they couldn't afford like, you know, two $29,000 courtside seat. But hey, they could definitely say that they were down there serving. Nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with you, Zinni. I you. thank you for this episode <laughs> let me, let me and it will continue.